Good evening. Good evening, Calista. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. This is Eric Nightlinger. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Okay, do we have any committee now, Kalista? Thank you, everyone. Just waiting for uh, to get a quorum of committee members so we can begin. Okay, where are the members? Uh, greetings. Greetings to everyone. Just be patient with us. We have to wait for a quorum of committee members to begin the meeting. Excuse me, Ms. Martinez. Mm -hmm. Hi. Is uh, Ms. Hilton uh, on the call? I, she re had replied to my email earlier. Will she be yes, on she, the? Yes, she is. Hi, Mr. Nightlinger. Okay. I'm here. I am uh, I'm here. Okay. No Hi. Thanks for the quick reply. Thank you. No worries. Hey, Mayor, I got in. I had a Zoom address from one of the notifications. Okay. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Warren. How are you? Uh, we're just waiting for our committee members. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. is 
All right. We got Paco, Jeff, Kalista. Give me one more member. Okay, we have some iPhones. Are those any uh, committee members on iPhone? Okay, it's 707. Just bear with us if you want to give the members a few minutes. This, uh, this presentation requires a vote of the committee, so we have to have quorum. We'll give it two more minutes to Hey, Jeff, you on? Yes, I'm on. You have Suman's number? I believe I do. Can you shoot him a quick te text? Okay. Thank you. Okay, Valerie's on. We good to go. Good evening. Good evening, Valerie. Thank you. You make quorums so we can now begin the meeting. So good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Carmen Martinez. I'm chair of CB9's Transportation Committee. Uh, since we don't have uh, a chat feature on this uh, Zoom meeting, I will ask everyone to please briefly identify yourself, introduce yourself uh, and your affiliation. If you are a um, committee member, a guest, uh, thank you. And uh, we will start with uh, 
Oh, right next to me, uh, Tina. Hi, good evening. I'm Sheena, my sister Shirley, and we're members of, I mean, we're family members of Earth Pier, and we're going to speak on um, the request for Earth Pier's way. Uh, so thank you for having us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Paco? Hi, everyone. I'm Paco. I'm a community member of uh, CB9, and I've uh, been on the Transportation Committee for a couple of years now. I'm looking forward to hearing more. Mr. Nightlinger? Hi, uh, Eric Nightlinger. I uh, live at 290 Empire. I, uh, I'm a guest today, but I'm formally uh, part of a transportation committee for District 15. I was appointed by Eric Adams when he was a uh, Brooklyn Borough president to a DOE position to help with the uh, special education bus problems that, that were, uh, you know, uh, needed some attention. And I worked for the citywide special education, special education um, committee as well. But now I'm calling concern uh, about some issues with uh, traffic uh, around Prospect Park. Um, and maybe I'll get a chance to speak later. Thank you. Thank you. Are you a community resident? Mr. Burke? Hi, I'm Warren Burke. I'm the first vice chair of CB9. Calista. Hi, my name is Calista. I'm a community member of uh, the CB9 Transportation Committee, and um, I look forward to hearing more. And nice to meet you all. Mr. O'Leary. Hello, I'm William. I'm uh, I'm just a resident to uh, of the district who jumps into the meetings. Uh, just passionate about transport issues, and uh, just doing mostly listening. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm Jeff Granham. I'm a community member and committee member for the transportation committee. Herbert D. Hi, uh, my name is Herbert Dubik. I'm the support and um, Shayna with the or Pierre Way. Um, I'm a guest. Okay. Can we have your last name? Herbert Dubik. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Greenish. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ayana Greenwich. I am a colleague of Sheena Bennett um, and a supporter of the initiatives around Earth Pier. Happy to be here. Thank you. Chantel. Hi, good evening. I'm Chantel Sherman. I'm a family member of Sheena Bennett, and I am in support of the initiative for Earth Pier Way. Thank you. Melody? Hi, I'm Melody Marzuka. I'm here in support of Erd's way, Erd Pierre's way. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, the Honorable Renee Collymore. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I am Renee Collymore, and to you, Madam Chair Carmen Martinez, I would say that I'm a guest, but I'm not a guest. I'm an all time guest. I'm your former district leader of the 57th Assembly District and your current uh, candidate running for state committee. And um, so tonight, I just wanted to stop by to say hi to everyone. I haven't seen you guys in quite a while at transportation. And I want to say, uh, be encouraged to all of you who are having and, and, and putting requests before the transportation committee. Uh, myself, I was able to get a street name after my dad downtown in uh, Fort Wrinkling Hill a number of years ago. It was hard, but it was done. It was needed. I'm praying for you and I'm supporting you. <laughs> and I just wanted to stop by quickly, Carmen, to say that um, I wanted to bring to everyone's attention uh, that 
this a beautiful initiative that began in the transportation committee at downtown Brooklyn uh, for something called Appleine's Garden. Appleine's Garden, when you all get a chance, I, I was very successful in being able to push things through with so many neighbors who helped along the way after a three month old baby that was killed by a speeding car um, on Gates Avenue and Vanderbilt Avenue. And so right at that corner, there is already a garden there, it's called a Gateway Triangle. We're going to expand that garden. We're going to close down the slip lane where cars still speed through the wrong, in the wrong direction, hurting folks and, and just not doing the right thing, reckless driving right there in that slip lane. So again, Appleine's Garden, look out for it. I, I will give you all the details when we have our groundbreaking and our a garden party there for all to come and share and enjoy. Thank you, everyone. Good night. I am Renee Collymore. Thank you, Renee. Have a good night. Pierre Albert. Hi, hello, community resident. Um, look forward to being a part of the discussion and learning about what's happening with transportation in that area. Thank you, Chair Carmen. Thank you. Steven. Hey, I'm Steven, Michelle. I'm a family friend of Urge Pierre, and I'm here to support the justice for EP. We have, uh, well, there's three iPhones. So I'll take any iPhone that wishes to speak now. <laughs> Carmen, this is Felice Robertson. I just wanted oh, to Felice. make sure that uh, I <laughs> introduce myself as a member of transportation and also a member of uh, CB9. Thank you. Thank you. Second iPhone. Oh, you you mute it. You mute. Mute it. Now I'm okay. Okay. Well, I'm okay. Oh well, Sanford. Okay. All right, okay, Sanford. Just... We'll see. Yes, I represent the estate of Eunice Pierre, and I will speak on behalf of this request. Thank you. Oh, I think, did I do Marie? No, Marie, Marie Bennett. Marie Bennett. Fatima. Sorry. Oh, I'll speak for Marie. She's my mom and she's uh, our peers aunt, and she's also here to support our peers way. Thank you. Okay. Fatima or Fatima? Fatima? Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. My name is Fatima. Yes, um, I'm in here in regards to being his friend and just to, um, sorry, have justice for him as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson or Ms. Johnson? Hi, um, my name is Steve Johnson. Back to back. Hello? Yes. Oh, hello. Yeah, my name is Steve Johnson. Um, I'm a close friend of Eric. It's still um, on. I'm here to support. I'm here to support um, Eric Pierre's way. Thank you. Then we have, uh, what is it, Landrima Mitchell? Oh, Michelle, Michelle, Landrina. Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Landrina Michelle. I am a family friend of Erz Pierre and in support of Erz Pierre Way. Great. So I think we only have uh, two iPhones on Identify. Or three. Felice was one of them, right? Okay, anyone on an iPhone care to identify themselves? Hi, I'm Fania Haliro. I'm calling in support of Earth Pierce Way. Okay. Anyone else before we get into tonight's topic? Okay, great. So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, the only item 
that, again, my name is Carmen Martinez, Chair of Transportation Committee. Uh, the only item on the agenda this evening is the uh, request for co-naming. Uh, the reason uh, why and nothing else got on the agenda is because we want to give our full attention to this request. We want to have the opportunity to allow everyone to make their, their presentation, to speak uh, in favor, against, neutral, uh, you know, uh, whichever way they, they feel about uh, the topic that we are discussing this evening. Uh, so therefore, I understand Mr. Uh, Sanford Rubenstein said that he will be speaking. Uh, I will open up the floor for Mr. Rubenstein to uh, speak. And after that, any other family member, friend, supporter, uh, Somebody just froze. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry for that, Mr. Riverstein. That is uh, our committee chair, Carmen Martinez. Uh, it looks like she's experiencing she froze. Um, some internet issues. Yeah, definitely, but feel free yeah, to move forward if, you would like, if, if you're ready to speak. Okay, certainly. Okay, my name is Sanford Rubenstein. I'm the attorney for the family of Udispia and I represent the estate. We are here today before this committee requesting this street co-naming at the southwest corner of Eastern Parkway and Utica Avenue to be named for Mr. Eudis Pierre, who died under infamous circumstances. Namely, he was a mentally ill man who in a confrontation with the NYPD was killed by NYPD officers. The purpose of the street naming will be to lead to greater awareness of the need for mental health specialists to accompany police when they are interacting with mentally ill individuals. So what happened to Eudis Pierre doesn't happen to anyone else in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanford. Uh, we're just gonna hold off a moment to allow the committee chair to return. I see that she is signed in. I'm yeah, back, I got thrown forward. out. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> That's optimum for you. Mr. Rubenstein, are you currently in litigation on any of issues concerning this? A notice of claim has been filed on behalf of the estate. In addition, the attorney general has opened a criminal investigation with regard to the actions of the police officers, which is presently underway. So the criminal investigation will, will determine whether or not um, he was treated unfairly or fairly, correct? The criminal investigation will determine whether one of two things will happen. One, a grand jury will be impaneled to address the issue of criminality of the actions of the police officers, or a report will be issued by the office explaining why a grand jury was not Convene. Thank you. I appreciate the information. Okay. Thank you, Warren. Thank you, Mr. Rubenstein. Uh, again, Thank I'm you. opening the floor for anyone that want, wishes to speak pro or against or, or just make a statement. We want to make sure that we hear everyone. Um, I would like to speak again. Hi, um, my name is Chantel. Um, I've been knowing Erds and his family for about 20 years now. And I can say, honestly, this has been one of the greatest tra tragedies that I've witnessed in my lifetime. Understanding that Erds genuinely had mental health needs and the family had been working so hard to um, get him help and support. And on the day of his murder, um, he was reaching out for help. I think that is extremely imperative that we bring attention to um, the needs of the mentally ill and continue with um, the efforts that the family has been making to not kill the mentally ill and support them. And I think that given that Earth had such a long promising life ahead of him that we will no longer have the opportunity to share with him, the very least that thing that we could do is memorialize him, um, honor his name, make sure that his name isn't forgotten, his story isn't forgotten, and that um, there is something, some type of 
comfort for the family. And I think that this is the very least thing the city can do for the family. So I am very, very, very much in support of Earth's Pierre Way. And I just ask that the committee and everyone strongly considers um, doing this, not just only for Earth's and our family, but for all of the victims who um, suffer loss of life in this way. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Valerie Fleming. Um, and I regret the, your loss to your family. Um, and I know the story from the incident forward, but can you give me a, some history, some background? Tell me about the gentleman and you know, where was he from? Is he from New York? I'm not sure. So can you give me a little history? Yes, um, I can give you a little history. Um, actually wrote a little something because I figured I'd be a little nervous, but I'll just start off by answering your question. Um, Erd uh, was born in Brooklyn. He was, um, he lived at 1090 Eastern Parkway really his whole life. And the tragedy happened um, right across the street from his home, basically right in front of his house. Um, and he was only 26. And there is so much support here and even people who can't make it because he was just a great person. And everyone who didn't personally know Earth but have been following the story and supporting us, um, it almost feels like they know him because the tragedy is just so, um, it's relatable somehow, you know? Um, and people feel like, especially in Brooklyn and in New York that they're ready for a change and because life shouldn't be lost because, you know, someone just needs help and maybe they're not functioning like everyone else and they're having a hard time. That doesn't mean that it's an automatic death sentence. I hope that answers your question. And then I could go into uh, what we had prepared also. Can uh, somebody spell his name for us, please? Sure, it's E-U-D-E-S. And then last name is P-I-E-R-R-E. Thank you. You can continue if you want to share with us what you wrote, what you prepared. We will listen. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, are we allowed to share the screen now? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, it's saying it's disabled. Oh, got it. All right, so we're gonna start off with a walkthrough with his website. Um, my sister Shirley is gonna walk you through it and I'm just gonna, you know, say some words on behalf of Erd and our request uh, that we're here for tonight. Thank you. So first I wanna start off by thanking Mr. Rubenstein for taking the time tonight to speak. Um, in solidarity with us. And thank you to the community board, the transportation committee, and all the members of the public for taking the time um, to speak to us and to be here tonight and for their support. Um, Erd Pierre, Erd Pierre was an extraordinary person. Um, uh, just scroll down, okay. And I'm sure you get the sense of that because we sent you 104 pages of documents. Um, also, there's 140 plus signatures that we, we received from residents in the area in support of Earth Pairs Way. There's almost 16,000 signatures on change.org uh, for the proposed Earth Peer Law, a cry for help. And because just last week, the city is expanding a program that diverts some mental health emergency calls from police to social workers and medics. And part of how Earth was inconsolably taken from us, we request that the co-naming of Southwest corner of Eastern Parkway and Utica to Earth Pierce Way. Like I said, people who don't even know Earth feel like they know him. Uh, just by looking at his pictures and seeing all the support and intense activism we've been doing. Um, to uphold his, um, his so sorry, 
seeing all the support and intense activism we've been doing in his honor and in his name to uphold his legacy and create real change. Um, Council member Crystal Hudson, Mr. Rubenstein, Reverend McCall, even the media, all who since the very beginning has stood with us and literally marched with us in the freezing cold, went one month to the day of Earth's demise. We walked from Eastern Parkway to Utica, uh, Eastern Parkway in Utica to the 71st precinct to mark Earth's humanity and to cry our call for justice. Um, the next month, we held a well-received mental health town hall virtual meet that created a space for people, but especially men, to share their experiences with mental health free of shame and judgment while inspiring and giving hope to those who continue to overcome. <laughs> and now to tonight, we believe it would only be just in solidarity and in community you will support us on our quest for justice for Erd and approve the co-naming of Erd Pierce Way. That place where he was born and raised can only also be the place he was murdered. It should now also be the place in honor and in memory as a place to remind us as the ones closest, um, um, closest, sorry. It's okay, um, good time. <laughs> It should now also be the place to remind us as the ones who um, are closest to him already know he mattered. And this would also exhibit there can be some sort of redemption and good faith from the city for change. So that's so that when his mom is going to get groceries at Sea Town and when she's crossing the street, to take the train every single day to go to work, she can look up and see her son's name, someone who was filled with life and aspirations, but unfortunately, as the Reverend McCall said, had to be a sacrificial lamb for change. Thank you. Great, thank you. I can buy my tongue. Great. Again, we remain open for comments, and questions. Any questions for for uh, the family? Committee? Community residents? I have a quick question. The, the, Paco. Request, the request specifically is the corner uh, right where he lived. Is that right? It's right on yes. yes. Eastern Parkway in Utica. Okay. Um, I have a question just of uh, logistics. If I'm not mistaken, isn't Eastern Parkway also uh, landmarked, like has the different color signs on some of it? Does that pose any uh, problem? For, for co namings or anything like that? Uh, I don't know if anyone in, in the committee uh, knows. They, they are so, so we can avoid any procedural hiccups. There's actually a couple of street co naming on Eastern Parkway oh, uh, that I know of immediately, and that is uh, James Davis, the councilman, uh, and uh, Reverend Clarence Norman and Mrs. Norman right at uh, Rogers and Eastern Parkway. James Davis is on North Strand and Eastern Parkway. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Uh, hi, um, my name is Herbert. Like, um, I'm also part of the community. I grew up right on St. Mark's, which is probably three, three to four blocks away from Eastern Parkway, where exactly Erd lived at. I went to school with Erd. Um, I actually spent half of my life with Erd right there on Eastern Parkway and Utica. Like we would sit right next, um, right in front of the radio shack that used to be there, across the street is Popeyes. And there's a fire hydrant right there that we would sit on almost every night watch um, everybody come out the train station because the train station doorway led straight over to the house. And we would just sit there 
back in the days we used to throw eggs at people walking by <laughs> from from um the top of the roof i know that's not a good story but that's that's to tell you like what um how long he's been there and how long we've been there um every night we would sit there we would watch we would stay up until 2 a.m 3 a.m labor days or never missed a single labor day since he was born that <laughs> as soon as you go on that street eastern parkway in utica you had to have seen earth there um for um when he died everybody showed up the whole community was there i've never seen that street filled up with so much people it was just like labor day all over again and everybody came out just just for erd erd he was special to his community as a part of the community um i have to say if it wasn't for erd i probably wouldn't have known a lot of people in around eastern parkway because i had no business on being on eastern parkway if i'm on saint mark's but for erd i would always be there we would always spend spend our last five dollars on Popeyes that was right across the street or go to the McDonald's across from Popeyes. Um, then down the street, we had um, the Jamaican spots. We <laughs> we went through a lot to, to eat, but everybody knew Erd and everybody knew me because of Erd. And Erd not only participated in one or two major events that were happening around the community, Erd was always present for anything that the community needed. Um, Black Lives Matter um, pr um, pr um, protests, anything that was going on, like Erd was present and he would call me like, do you want to go to this? I'm like, Erd, I don't know about this, man. But he'll be like, I'm going, I don't care what you do. <laughs> but he, he, he was always there for, for his community. And I just hope that his community is there for him now. And that's something that we would love to see. I know so far we only have 140 signatures, but there's more we can get. We have 15,000 online. There's more we can get to, to show the support that Erd has and that and how many people he impact throughout his 26 years of life. He only had 26 years of life. And we're asking for a big change right now for 26 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, anyone else wishes to uh, share stories? We just yeah. uh, want to hear everyone that um, want to express their sentiments. Perfect. My name is Jean Claude Michel, and I'm also a family member of Erds Pierre, and I support Erds Way. I've known Erds for the majority of his life. I too am a resident of Crown Heights. I lived on 1102 Eastern Parkway. And as you can tell, because of the proximity of how close we are, we were pretty much in each other's life for a, a large portion of Erds life. He used to come over to my house every, every day. And um, we spoke about great things. We went to school together. We also attended St. Matthew's, which is directly across the street. Went to Catholic school as well at St. Gregory's, which is right there on St. John's. All of his life, we spent together um, with my brothers and his brother as well. Um, the one thing that I really want everybody to take away from um, Erds Pierre, besides the fact that he was so loving and willing to give all his support to anything and everything that was going on in the community, is that that didn't stop only in our community. He did also attend CSI, um, where he was a part of the basketball team. And during the summers, he made it his, he made it his duty to go and support the kids, um, try to mentor them as much as he could, because he knew that Everybody has something special in them that only if they have some guidance, they will be able to fulfill their, their potential. And it's, it's heartbreaking that he had to lose his life 
this way. Because he too had a lot of potential. That moment that he was there crying for help shouldn't be his last breath. It should have been diverted. But I think that the biggest takeaway is that going forward, when you hear the name Birds Pierre, you understand that. Sorry, I apologize. When you hear the name Ertz Pierre, and you have Ertz Pierre Way on Eastern Parkway, it's a reminder to all those kids with potential that, sorry, that you shouldn't give up. There's always an opportunity for you. You are great. You can make it. You can make a change. You can be a pillar of this community. And I think that's what really the family is fighting for, to show kids in, in Crown Heights where he grew up, that regardless of the situation, regardless of how hard life is, you always have a chance to make it somewhere. Erz was an inspiring artist as well. He, he, me and him would stay in my room <laughs> till the wee nights of the, till like 1 a.m. And he would just li have me listen to some of his music, tracks and tracks and tracks. And um, it's beautiful to see how much he's grown and how he was able to use music as his outlet to say some things and speak out freely about what he, he was experiencing in life. And um, it was his coping mechanism in some sense. Um, and it was beautiful to the point that me and him, we, uh, we, we put together an artist showcase where I could show him that, hey, you know what? I have faith in you and your music. And in retrospect, he was able, instead of making it all about him, this is how beautiful Erds is. He then invited all of his friends that he was surrounded with to join in the showcase as well. That's how selfless he was. Instead of making it all about him, he wanted to share the shine with his family, his friends, those other people that he knew that were aspiring to be artists just as much as him. I think that this is a real big initiative. I think this is what the, the city, our community needs at this point in time, going through COVID and everything, letting people know that we do have your support. We do have your back. We're willing to help you cope with anything that you may go, in, go through mentally um, to help you reach the, the fullest of your potential. Um, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak and I support Erds Pierre and the renaming of Eastern Parkway to Erds Way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, the, door, the floor remains open. Um, of course, we didn't, we didn't know Mr. Pierre, so it's important to us to hear from those that did know him, uh, who can give us an idea of who Mr. Pierre was. So Hi. please um, don't hesitate to speak. My name is Shirley Burnett. I'm also a family member of Erd Pierre. And um, I wanna thank everybody who's taking the time out to listen to our story. Thank you to the committee for allowing us to have this platform and putting us, you know, we feel really special that we were the only, the only ones on the agenda to speak out for our cause. And thank you for listening. Thank you for all our supporters who tuned in. And I wanna say thank you for everybody who spoke against uh, for Erd. And we're talking about a man in himself, but we're also talking about the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is mental health. And the NYPD needing better resources to, for, and protocols when, they, when, when they're faced with mental health, the way they respond to people with mental health. And it's a reminder that it's not the first time that this happened in the city, unfortunately. It's not the second time. It's not the third time. Unfortunately, it's been more than one instance. And unfortunately, the, the, and the result is fatal instead of getting help. So the Erd's way is a reminder that Erd was loved in his community and 
that is the street he was born and raised and also for all those that unfortunately and all those families that unfortunately lost someone due to mental health because we all you know we had a uh, we had the reverend talk and he he said a very important point that mental health is not just being diagnosed somebody could wake up and have a bad day like the NYPD and it's not one time that we badmouth the NYPD but they are human like us they have emotions like us they bleed like us they're not superior in any way so of course they can go out and have a bad experience themselves and you know unfortunately things happen this was the results in Earth's case Unfortunately, you know, the protocols, you know, we need better protocols, we need better communication, we need better resources. So, you know, and like I said, it's not the first time and we really just want Earth Peer to represent like a change, period. Just change and awareness. And that's what I want to say, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do any of the uh, committee members have any questions? No? Okay. Well, thank you so much to all of you who took the time to come and uh, speak on behalf of Mr. Pierre and to uh, plead the case for the co-naming of um, the southwest corner of Utica Avenue and Eastern Parkway. Um, we are, have all heard your uh, testimonies, your statements. Um, and at this time, um, the committee can either uh, ask any additional questions. Uh, we will take a vote on whether to recommend to the board that they uh, support the co-naming of the southwest corner of Eastern Parkway in Utica in honor of Mr. Pierre. Um, so I will ask for someone to um, make one, one of the committee members, if a committee members can uh, make a motion, please. Yeah, this is Jeff. Uh, I make a motion that uh, we move this to a vote. And this is Felice Robertson. I, I second that emotion. Great. Okay. Uh, do roll call. Paco. I vote for it very much so. Thank you. Are we doing Valerie? vote or are we voting? Well, we're gonna vote through roll call. Okay. I wanna record it. So Paco say yes. Valerie? Valerie says yes. Great. Jeff? Yes. Felice? Yes. Thank you. Calista? Yes. Okay. Are there any other any other members, committee members who are on phone whose name I don't see? I want to make sure that your vote is counted. So if you are, if there's any members on the iPhone that needs to vote, please unmute yourself, identify yourself, and vote. Okay, I guess I'm the last one. So I'm Carmen Martinez. And I vote yes. So by a unanimous vote, the transportation committee will move this forward to the full general board. We will make recommendation that they support and approve of the uh, co-naming of the Southwest corner of Eastern Parkway and Utica Avenue in honor, uh, in honor of Mr. Pierre. And I don't say his first name because I don't know how to say it, don't wanna be disrespectful. So I just say Mr. Pierre. Um, so thank you. Thank you all for, for coming and making presentation. Uh, we will, uh, 
the board will let you know when the uh, general board meeting will be. Uh, the ex we will present to the executive committee and then uh, you will be invited to uh, make presentation to the general board and the general board will have the ultimate vote. Our step is just to make the recommendation to the general board. Thank you so much. Um, I feel your pain as a mother. Um, so thank you and uh, peace to all of you, love. I just and, wanna, I'm yes. sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. I just want to say thank you. And as you mentioned, you are a mother and this is, you know, a mother, mother's worst pain. I do want to say Erd's Pierre was, Erd Pierre's mother is on the call. And, um, you know, I, whether it's emotions or, you know, she, um, she wasn't able to introduce herself, but I did want to let everybody know that she is on the call and she was listening to everybody. And, she, you know, for the family, we are so thankful. Thank you for hearing us out and giving us a chance. And thank you for your votes. Thank and you. And for the unanimous vote, that's just amazing. And it's so encouraging. And we we, we just, you know, no matter what you guys said, you know, we wouldn't have stopped. You know, we're really going to go like this justice for earth thing is just, it's going to keep going, help. you know. So we just thank you for, you know, giving us this kind of encouragement that, you know, unanimously you heard us. You don't, you don't know us, but in 30, what, 30 minutes, <laughs> you know, 50 minutes, you, you understand and our pain and our cause. So we just thank you. And that's just so promising. And just thank you. Thank you. Oh, you, you're most welcome. And thank you so much for sharing uh, his life with us uh, and helping us make a decision because we could not have made one unless everybody took their turn in introducing Mr. Pietro and sharing a little bit of his life and his contribution uh, to his community and to his peers. So uh, thank you so much. Um, I would, the, the transportation committee, we will now do our uh, updates and open discussion. Uh, you're more than welcome to stay or, uh, you know, go celebrate and uh, have peace. Give, surround his mother with, with the love that she needs. Thank you so much. So now um, the transportation committee will move on. I believe Mr. Uh, where he go? Oh, he's there. Night Nightlinger, you have some issues you want the com the uh, transportation committee to take up on your behalf. Yeah, sure. And first, my condolences to the Peer family. It's an awful yes. tragedy, and I've dealt with special education children and schools and getting them the help they need at young ages. And that, and uh, I, you know, my condolences. Um, not, uh, not to you know, steal the thunder of, of, of that event, and I would have voted for the sign as well if I was a member, but I just wanted to bring up an issue, I think, um, separate from this, of course, is uh, the, um, the traffic issues in Brooklyn. I my, myself and my wife uh, work for the city, and we have to commute, and the construction on Empire and Franklin and uh, the new bike lanes they added on Parkside um, really uh, bring the traffic down to one lane and the mornings get uh, very crazy. And it, it being a safety issue for the kids going to, uh, uh, to the schools as well, the traffic's going through red lights and whatnot. And I know the traffic guards are doing their best, but um, I want to bring up the issue of opening the drive inside the park again. I found some articles back in 2017 um, when it was an experiment to close the park for the bicyclists and uh, pedestrians. And I understand that, uh, but the park was originally designed for you know, pedestrians, bicycles, and two lanes, I think at least two lanes of vehicles, and many in and outputs throughout the park. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. As you drive around, you see the entrances that are blocked off. Um, I'd like to try to either start a petition or at least get something on the agenda for maybe in the next meeting to uh, request a, uh, another traffic um, count. I guess that's how they do it. And to see you know, all the problems that are related um, to the single lane on Parkside particularly, because um, if there's one double parked car or delivery, or God forbid, and I've seen it, an ambulance or a fire truck, they cannot move. 
Um, the bike lanes were put along the curb where the cars were parked. They put them out in the street, like around the other sides of the park. And um, it, you can't go anywhere. So part of it being a safety issue, uh, commuting issue. And, um, you know, I don't know if there's anyone else who would second that, but um, it's definitely an issue I want to try to re reinstate the park opening at least uh, for rush hour or any other um, uh, times that it used to have. I don't know if any of you remember driving to the park, but it makes commuting to Manhattan and relieves the pressure on Empire. And it's just better for our neighborhood in general. That's what I have to say on that for now. I, I emailed Ms. Hilton uh, uh, the article in question. I don't know if that can be submitted for the record. Uh, on the Gothamist uh, newspaper article. Thank okay. you for your time, Larry. Right. Um, well, touching on the on the park side um, issue, that is something that uh, it is it's actually not within Community Board Nine, but it's an issue that has been discussed at our Transportation Committee meeting because uh, it has affected uh, the emergency vehicles going to the hospitals. Uh, we understand that sometimes they force to cut through the park in order to uh, maneuver through traffic to get uh, patients uh, to the hospital in a timely manner. Um, I think is 14, CB14 is, yeah, CB, it's, it's CB14. And I actually attended, um, well, I didn't attend, but I, I, I listened in on a few of their, um, transportation committee meeting and it seems like they have not even been discussing um, the situation uh, over there on Parkside. So it's something that uh, I need to communicate to them directly. And I even talked about us probably having a joint, some kind of joint meeting uh, with uh, DOT uh, to see how we can uh, get around that situation. Um, now, those bike lanes is something that have been in the making for a long, 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 long time. Uh, likewise, the uh, Franklin and uh, Empire construction project that you are referencing, um, this, these are not any, any projects that are new. They just now come into <laughs> fruition. But um, we've been dealing with, we just started dealing with Empire and frankly, like 2013, might have been even before that, because I joined the board in 2013 and there was already discussion. Um, so it is now uh, actually that the construction is taking place. And it, it was supposed to be completed by January, but due to weather and, and other circumstances, uh, it's actually not supposed to be completed until October. Uh, of this year. Last month, we had uh, the construction liaison at the meeting to who gave us an update uh, on what's going on with the construction there. Uh, and there's other issues that we are dealing with, like street marking, uh, uh, crossing, crossway uh, for the students that are at the school uh, directly affected by um, the construction that's going on. So we are dealing with those issues. Uh, and both, uh, whether in or out of, of the district, um, and bike lanes on Flatbush Avenue is the same thing. Uh, that's also an issue that has been addressed. So glad to have you and glad to hear your concern and definitely making a note of uh, your concerns as well. And I will continue to pursue uh, having some kind of joint discussion. It might not even be a meeting, it might just be, you know, some kind of uh, communication with uh, CB14 to see how we can uh, get together joint uh, forces uh, to try to find some kind of solution uh, to the situation in Parkside, because it does affect uh, residents from both, com uh, both community board, not just one. Uh, and we'll certainly look into uh, what's the plan for opening uh, Prosper Park um, to traffic. I don't know how that's, you know, that's going to work out, but we'll make the, uh, we'll make the inquiry for sure. We have oh, a new you. transportation commissioner. Uh, you know, a lot of time, different administration have different opinions and work different ways. So we'll see what's, 
uh, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez's uh, take on this. Well, thank you for uh, in keeping me informed or just as someone to be a part of it. I, I appreciate that. And uh, yes, yeah, you know, and, having uh, those bike, bike lanes, you know, was probably a solution to not having so many in the park. So having them out and in the park is kind of redundant. So mm -hmm. it seems like it would be logical to allow the parts, the vehicles to go back on the roadways because now you have the bike lanes on the outside as well as the inside, you know, but uh, we'll see what the logic is. Hey, Paco, you raise your hand. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just want to say, I, I hear your concerns and frustrations. Um, I would, uh, adamantly oppose us supporting uh, car reintroducing cars into Prospect Park. Though um, the park was not designed for cars. The park was is 150 years old. Cars are not. Um, and if you're in the park in the morning, you see it gets so much use. And I, I remember the the counts that they had done because it was that was like a 20 year project. Central Park was an even longer project to get cars out of there. It should, of course, be open for parks department trucks that are, you know, doing tree work and that sort of stuff. For emergency vehicles, of course, emergency vehicles should go where the emergency is as fast as they can get there. But it was, the it, at least when they had done the studies a few years ago, um, it was a few hundred cars that were going through the park. You know, mostly in the morning, northbound they were going. Um, but you're talking about thousands of park users that should not have to while they're jogging or walking or hiking or whatever they're doing i i really don't think they should have to contend in a park with cars that were excessively going above the speed limit within the park and it feels i don't know i i i feel like it, prospect park is very much a a community uh, gem for both cb9 for cb6 cb14 for everyone um i i think it would be uh while, while i understand the frustration of uh, of, of traffic and there are more cars in the city and so many reasons that there's more traffic, but um, I don't think opening the, the park to traffic again will win us any support and, and I, I would certainly not vote for that. But I, I do hear your, your uh, concerns. I, I don't want to dismiss that at all. Thank you. Oh, well, there's two, yeah, there's two sides. Yeah. Mr. O'Leary? Yeah. Hello. Yes. You yeah. Hi. I. Oops. I just. Yeah. I. I. I just wanted to to express in the strongest possible terms about uh, opening the park. I do not support that at all. As as a fellow resident, um, I. I. This is kind of my jam. I could prattle on for a long time about this. Um, I'm a. I just. I just feel like just snap open Google Maps and zoom in on the city and anywhere that's not a building has infrastructure for vehicles on it except for a few places and prospect park is one of those few places it is where you can go and be free of the assault of vehicles because you're not safe on the sidewalk you're not safe in a crosswalk you're not safe in a bike lane but in the park you're safe you can hear the birds i i, I as a fellow resident i i i i i don't support that at all and Thank you, Felice. Felice? Sorry, yes, I'm sorry. Um, my, I'm doing the phone and cooking. All right, I support my uh, fellow members here. Um, I am sorry for um, all the blockades that we have now um, have upon us. I was raised here and I have to say to you that park um, is a place for us to breathe clean air, let's say, and not be concerned with cars running through. And it took a while for us to petition to not have cars run through there. So, you know, um, we have to try and come up with another uh, way of um, remedying this, but the park is not it. Sorry. So I agree with my members that's on the board here. Valerie? Hi, and this goes out to William and to the other gentleman. 
I'm not sure what street you live on, William, but I have beautiful birds in my area, on my block, all the time. I have my windows open, and it is marvelous to see them just on my block doing their things, and, and to include the squirrels and all this other. But I do want to say that I don't think that opening the park right now is the ideal thing for the situation that we're in. But I think that we need to look at how we reprogram the usage of the street itself. Because I think that so much is going on in the street that we're trying to have this lane, that lane to accommodate everybody. We we're, um, uh, have additional vehicles on the street because of a new income revenue through Uber and Lyft and this and that. Um, we have the people that are um, doing the deliveries, not just the, the UPS and the Amazon, but the, the meals and the this and the that and the Grubhub and all this other, that it seems that we're narrowing the passageway on the street to in an attempt to slow down and do calming of the traffic. But we're introducing all these additional things to the street. So I think, how do we reprogram our thought to allow the different parts to happen in our neighborhood? Because I'm finding now that this is, I'm just gonna go down with this and, and just, that's my name, Valerie Fleming, V-A-L-E-R-I-E-F-L-E-M-I-N-G. Vehicles like the electric bicycles and the certain things are now coming up on the sidewalks now and you don't hear them. And then that's um, another issue. So my thing is how do we reprogram? How do we kind of look at things differently now? Because we want to have everything. We want to um, please everyone, but strategically, how are we moving the traffic along, whether it's by bike, whether it's by scooter, whether it's pedestrian walking, whether it's the senior citizen trying to safely get off the street across the corner, the, the delivery trucks, the person going to work. How do we now reprogram how we do things? So uh, right now I'm, I'm saying um, to Eric, it was nice back in the day when we had the, the vehicles going through the park, but we didn't have as much uh, moving parts as we do now. So I'm not sure what the, uh, the solution is, but I do think we need to learn how to reprogram what we're doing to uh, be able to share the roads with all the different moving parts. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Jeff? Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, so, Eric, I don't know how many times you've had the opportunity to uh, be part of these types of discussions. Uh, I've been doing this for the better part of 10, 15 years, and I've watched the room change over the years where <clears throat> folks whose uh, relationship with the automobile have increasingly come under attack and I have to admit, I'm one of those, but I'm starting to feel that this is not a battle that you could win. And the suggestion of reintroducing automobile traffic into the park is something that I feel has zero chance of ever being done. Um, and what you heard tonight is all of the reasons why any elected official would tell you that they can't. It's, it would be suicide for any elected official to support that. Um, there have been discussions. As Carmen said, this is not our jurisdiction, but I've heard discussions. I've read things on next door where they're looking at opening the park for ambulances, for emergency vehicles. The, um, another solution might be some reconfiguration of how that bike lane is positioned where they, because it's an extremely wide sidewalk that you have on Parkside. So it might be possible for some emergency vehicle lane to be configured there. But those are the things that I would encourage you and anybody who supports your cause to investigate where there's something else that can be done with that massive stretch of uh, Parkside 
from Ocean to Coney Island Avenue, right? Because I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been caught in that traffic jam ever since the uh, new bike lane was put in. The other thing, and it's interesting that you should raise this tonight, I was going to ask the community, the committee rather, to keep your eyes open on the growing amount of literature that is becoming available on what cities around the world are wrestling with. And it will give you insight as to what we should expect, right? Um, you know, I think I shared an article with Carmen about a week or so ago. Uh, I just came across one uh, a couple of days ago that once again, if you're a car lover, the handwriting on the wall is not good because they're looking at something called a 15 minute city, which mm -hmm. a 66 year old guy like myself, I don't necessarily want my world to shrink to within 15 minutes of where I could walk and ride a bike. But, you know, as they say, read the room. And it's it doesn't look good for car lovers. And I'll, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Jeff. Kalista? Hey, I just um, wanted to uh, thank everyone. And thanks, Jeff, also for bringing up the 15 minute city and how a lot of cities around the world, especially in Europe are starting to reconfigure. Um, it's uh, definitely changing in a less car centric direction. And thank you, Eric, for sharing your, um, your insight. I also echo what a lot of my fellow members mentioned about not supporting uh, bringing cars back into the park. And um, in reference to uh, the bike lanes outside of the park, I can understand why you and many other people might think, oh, it's redundant because there's bike lanes in the park. Um, as someone who used to commute very regularly by bike, um, I personally find the Flatbush Avenue bike lane to be a godsend because when I used to commute home from work at 12.31 a.m. in the morning, you know, I didn't feel safe riding through the park at night and not to mention when I would ride through the park, I've been stopped by the cops because technically you're not allowed in the park after a certain time. So um, having that Flatbush bike lane creates a safer and direct route to um, our part of the neighborhood. And mind you, it's also an equity issue because the west side or the park slope you know, side, which is whiter and wealthier, they've always had that bike lane, at least for the past 10 years, I believe. And it's like, why shouldn't our side of the park have you know, nice things like a, a protected bike lane. So um, that's just the point I wanted to bring up that, you know, there are people who commute by bike and who would, you know, who benefit from external bike lanes that are connected outside to connect to the various neighborhoods. Uh, the Parkside bike lane, um, I hear you guys about it being, uh, you know, uh, narrowing the road. I do think that, uh, that in general, it, there could be a possibility of having it on this wider sidewalk. I know eventually there's plans to connect Ocean Avenue to the Parkside bike lane to the Flatbush Avenue and have it all like circling the park. Um, so that's something to revisit, but I just wanted to share uh, that perspective that you there are a lot of road users as I think Valerie mentioned, you have electric scooters, you have the car, um, the electric bikes, people using cargo bikes to tote their kids around. So um, there's definitely a need for safe infrastructure outside of the park that connects you to the various neighborhoods in the park. Thank you. Thank you, Kalista. Uh, Eric, you want to add? Yeah, I think, thanks for everybody's input. It sounds like, uh, you, know, um, you know, sometimes you gotta shoot for the stars and settle with the clouds, right? Uh, it'd be nice to have the park um, back open, but the real problem really is the park side. And I understand safety. I drop my kids off to school. Um, my son's in middle school over an MS442 and uh, I have to drive him to school every morning. And uh, I don't feel safe for him walking home through the park. So I gotta go pick him up. And I'd love to not have to have a vehicle. And I work in Staten Island for the DOT, that's where I have to commute to. And there's no real easy way to get there without spending hours on the ferry and subway. So, you know, I'm kind of forced to, uh, for purposes to drive, but uh, you know, there, there's a middle ground and um, sometimes it takes a study. Um, I just want to point out, like you said, uh, other places around the world, if you ever been to Amsterdam, 
they got they got it down for quite a while. They have a pedestrian lane, bike lane, mo like just about a motorcycle lane, um, and then they have a car lane and a tram lane. And you really can't cross between the two. They make kind of a very distinct barrier. So you know, I I do those rebel those rebel scooters that fly across the sidewalks and nearly hit you all the time in silent. Um, that is a problem. So yeah, maybe the reprogramming or just addressing or updating the uh, the issues would would help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, for coming to our transportation committee for sharing your concern. Um, thank you to the committee members. Uh, for your attentiveness to our guests, uh, for helping us deal with the uh, the request for the street call naming with Mr. for Mr. Pierre, uh, it was very emotional. Uh, it's been a very emotional night, um, as I said. Uh, just listening to uh, to everyone uh, talk about Mr. Pierre. You know, a lot of time we 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 read things in the newspaper. We see it in uh in the news but sometimes you know when you hear from people who are familiar actually uh know uh the person it, it puts a new perspective so i want to thank you guys uh, for tonight uh, and uh, all of the uh, community residents for coming um and uh it's 8 15 well, A16, so unless there's anything else that the Transportation Committee wishes to take up. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, my God, I almost forgot. CB9 is planning a, um, it's a street fair, um, resource fair. Is Mia still there? Yes, it's a, yeah, a, more, more of a resource fair. Right, resource fair. So all of the committees are responsible for um, putting forward a presentation, booth, or uh, whatever, as it relates to um, our topic or you know what 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 it is that we do. So um, we, as a transportation committee, need to come up with ideas uh, for resources to uh, bring to the community. Uh, one of the things that I spoke about when we had a meeting, a planning meeting was having, uh, providing information on uh, accessory, uh, fair fare, uh, reduce uh, um, metro cards, uh, and other programs that uh, MTA uh, has that people sometimes are not even aware of and, or they don't even know how to um, avail themselves of the resources. And actually last Friday, I went to a breakfast where the MTA president was there. And uh, that's one of the stuff that he spoke about. What the MTA is trying to do is to be able to publicize and promote all of these programs because people, you know, he's particularly the fair fair uh, where people of certain income, uh, of course, get to uh, pay a lower fare uh, kind of like in the same line as as they reduce fare for for seniors. Um, so and and I actually approached him about reaching out to his office, and I'm going to do that um, to have some of the uh, some of his staff or some of his divisions uh, be present at the resource fair and provide information on um, you know resources, transportation, uh, jobs. Uh, opportunities, uh, you know, a lot of time there's even particular for those business, small businesses, a lot of time you can find uh, little uh, resources uh, doing business with MTA, like doing business with the city, that they might have uh, opportunity for small uh, businesses in the district to partner with the MTA. I see Valerie raise her hand. Yes, Valerie. You said that you attended um, a meeting. Is there a date and a location for this event? Well, it's a planning meeting that the, that uh, we had the, the committee chairs with the board. Uh, location was an issue because originally the discussion was Prospect Park, but apparently Prospect Park doesn't want to, uh, will not allow us to do it on the day that we want to do it because it's, uh, what, what, what is it they have, the uh, smorg smorgasbord? 
So they say that uh, this mortgage board is taking place at the same time on the date that the board is planning to do, and they don't allow um, two events at the same time. So then we talked about other uh, venues like Wingate, um, you know, other parks. Uh, um, so it's, it's all still um, up in the air, actually, and open uh, for discussion. So each committee is supposed to come back with a proposal or, you know, idea suggestions uh, for location, because I don't believe that they have actually uh, locked down a location. Am I right, Mia? You are correct. Um, it's actually looking like it may be Ron, uh, Dr. Robert McNair Park. Uh, that park at the uh, Triangle of Classen, Washington, Union, Eastern Parkway. No. You mean the one that I suggested? <laughs> and they <Perhaps>. say, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, looking, it's, it, it looks like it may be uh, that location just because it'd be great for foot traffic, people back and forth to the museum, park, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so hopefully Parks Department gets back to us uh, with uh, some good news and that, that will probably be the location. Okay, great. Nicholas? Yeah, I say if it is so, I think we may have to close a couple of streets. We may have to close Clarkson from Eastern Parkway all the way to Poyo to President Street because you're gonna need that much space. Yeah, yeah it's, and, uh, it's too bad. It's too bad we couldn't get Wingate Field or the Board of Education or Old Bozinger High School Field. Oh, uh, I mean, I think the park will work if you do a street closure. Yes, yeah, street closure. We'll do that. Yeah, on class, yeah. So you may have to close the street from Franklin all the way to the park. You, you probably will leave Washington open and mm. and uh, and uh, and all that area, so you could get this rectangle right to put all the stuff that's there. That can happen. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. So, if anybody have any any suggestions for um, you know our role in in the in the uh, resource fair. What else um, we can bring forth in terms of transportation? Um, please feel free to share it. Carmen, I, I just want to circle back to one thing, and I guess it's kind of tied to this, what you're asking now. Um, I think that it would help everybody on the committee if we come across information that we could share with, with each other. Uh, I mentioned one article, Callista was familiar with it. Uh, our guest, Eric, mentioned some things that uh, in his role with DOT, I guess, he's exposed to. And I find that it's extremely important for particularly folks on this committee who may be kind of siloed into one way of thinking, either pro-bike, pro-car, to recognize that what we're wrestling with here is an issue that is being uh, dealt with across the globe, especially in urban areas. So mm -hmm. to that end, unfortunately, since we no longer have chat available on these meetings, I wanted to drop a link in where anyone who hasn't read this article about the 15 minute city would have access to it. So the only thing I could think of, unless you have a suggestion is that I can send it to you Okay. And then you can share it with any everybody else. It's yeah, I found it helpful because mm. I certainly was one of those folks who was strongly in favor of you know the way the world was as it relates to the automobiles. But I'm starting, as I said before, to recognize that something has to change, right? So these articles are helpful. I think it will kind of shift people's thinking and maybe get some better creative suggestions as to how we as a group, as a committee can, you know, shape what's to come because something is coming that's way different than what we currently have. So I'm oh, going yeah. to email the thank link you. to you and you can share it with whoever, you know, is interested in reading about that. Oh, thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. 
you know, um, so anyone, you know, I mean, I, I try to share, you know, whatever comes from wherever it goes to the transportation committee uh, to review. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if uh, I, I was sitting here trying to remember, but then you remember Gridlock Sam that used to write, right? And I think it was like in the early 90s or something that he wrote a piece where he talked about uh, how uh, we were over, New York City was headed towards carless, where there would be like no cars. Uh, and I'm gonna have, to, I'm gonna Google and see if I find that. But it's, you know, it, it, it's amazing that it was so long ago uh, and now here we are today uh, actually facing exactly what he predicted was gonna happen. Uh, which he did over 30 something years ago. Uh, so yeah, anybody has any article, anything that you wish to share, please do so. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, I think even when we, uh, when we send out the notices and whatever, everybody email is there so we can all share information either way. You know, you can reply to all and, and share information amongst it because sometimes I might not be around or might not see your email. So, um, you know, amongst us committee, uh, you can send it to me, I will share, but you know, if you look at the, the, the meeting notice that you can reply to all and share information as well. Okay. So again, it's uh, gonna be 8.30. Thank you so much again, everyone uh, for being here. Um, next month, uh, I'm going to uh, bribe uh, our representative to come back. <laughs> Alexander and Diana so that we can get um, full updates on what's happening uh, with those two agencies and all of the uh, issues uh, that we left outstanding at the last meeting that they were to report back. But I just felt like tonight was just such a, a heavy thing to, uh, to deliberate and, and make a decision on that. We just needed to concentrate on this family and hearing their plea uh, so that we can make a decision one way or the other. So next month, uh, we will get back to um, having our presenters, our agencies presenter. And I'm going to try to get someone from MTA to also come uh, and talk about, because we, you know, I know we, we talked one time and we pushed for the Winthrop uh, train station to become accessible, uh, that services Kings County Hospital. So I want to continue to pursue that as well, uh, accessibility for some of these train stations in, in CB9. So um, unless uh, there's nothing else, I don't see anybody with a raised hand. Thank you again. I wish everybody uh, a good uh, and safe night. And I'll uh, see you around the board meeting, All right. if not in the street. Thank you very much. Well, I'll see you next door. Good night. Yeah. Good, night. Uh, good, night. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night, good night. Good night everyone. Hello. Hello.